Why You Can Never Fully Remember a Dream Written by Pistachio X Narrated by Frankie Denham Have you ever wished that there was a device that could record your dreams? Something that would simply allow you to show your friends that nightmare you had last night? It exists. At least it used to, until the dream machine was demolished along with the blueprint. I'm one of the unlucky people to have come across it. I studied at Brown University last year and took a class specifically named Oneirology Tech. It was a course only for what the university considered the elite. You had to be double majoring in two of the following four. Psychology, Neuroscience, Anatomy and Computer Engineering. It was an odd combination but one that was necessary to even be considered to be part of the class. All that was told about the class was that if you got in, you would be part of a huge and important project, one that you couldn't tell anyone about. Hundreds of students would apply to get into the class, but most would get denied. I, for one, was invited by my computer tech professor, Professor Lanson. He's told me multiple times he saw potential in me and that he wanted me to work with him on a project. Me and only 13 other students were admitted into the class. I walked into the class on a Monday morning and looked around only to find out I was one of only two girls taking part in the project. That day was when we would find out what we would be creating was called the Dream Machine. With trial and error, we were expected to have devised a machine in two years our junior year. After long and strenuous nights of seeing our ideas tarnished by miscalculation or lack of understanding what was missing in our machine, we tested it out. On me. I was told to lay down while my team members attached all types of wires to almost every part of my skull. I was then given a sleeping pill. Sleeping pills shorten the REM period during the sleep cycle, which is where dreams occur. This causes you to wake up thinking you never dreamed that night, when there's a possibility you did, and just don't remember any of it. I knocked out in a matter of minutes after taking one. I woke up to faces filled with disbelief. They were watching my dream on the TV attached to the machine. I had a dream that I was on a trip to New York, walking in the city, exploring all of the little shops hidden in between the big business buildings. We had created the machine a month earlier than the due date. We cried and even laughed, still in shock that this was happening. We showed our professor, who was more than impressed. We then began to take turns using the machine, until something terrible happened. On June 2nd of 2014, a classmate named Jeremy Castro had taken the machine home so that he could record his dream. He brought in the tape and we watched it on the projector. We were told to never watch our dream without the class, so unless you remembered what your dream was and the details of it, you'd be in for a surprise along with the class. This was the first nightmare we watched. Jeremy's dream started with him at a forest preserve at dusk. The dream was five minutes of him looking at the lake, emotionless, when suddenly, without any rhyme or reason, he jumped in. It wasn't a suicide, it was a type of dream where he just had no control of what was happening. The dream ended with him underwater. We all looked at each other uncomfortably for a second until we realized we should have been prepared to watch anything. We weren't prepared for what was to come next though. The next morning I showed up to class, only to find Jeremy absent. This was strange to me, considering he was always one to come early to class. I called him. No one picked up. The next day he was missing again. That's when the class was worried and told the police. We stopped working on the machine, concerned as to what happened to him. We got our answer that Friday.
He was found in the same lake he jumped in when we watched his dream. We took our time to grieve about what happened. Over time, we just decided Jeremy was depressed and dreamed himself into drowning because he'd been planning to end his life. Like a lot of other things, we were wrong. The next day, the one other girl in the class, Delilah, came in with her tape, having no recollection of what her dream was about. It started off with us all in class listening to the professor. Delilah storms in with a distorted face. Her smile is huge and her eyes are wide and distant. We all turn around to look at her, concerned. When out of nowhere, like Jeremy, she did something with no known reason. This was far more disturbing considering we were all involved. Me, specifically. We didn't laugh this one off. Delilah looked at me, embarrassed and frightened. Instead of analysing the dream like we usually do, we called it a day. The next day I came to class, still feeling quite eerie about what I'd watched the day before and knowing that Jeremy's dream ended up happening. My heart stopped. I looked around. Delilah wasn't in class. Ten minutes passed when the door behind me opened. I turned around to find Delilah there with that same distorted face, an insane looking smile. I shot up from my seat only to fall down from feeling nauseous. Before I could collect myself, Delilah was in front of me. Her hands tightly gripped around my neck, squeezing the life out of me. I woke up in a hospital bed, confused and terrified of what had happened. I always had a feeling Delilah didn't like having me as her other female competition in the class, but I didn't think she had bad intentions. I still don't. Everyone has exaggerated dreams based off something small. I was told later that day that Delilah was arrested and most likely heading to an insane asylum. My professor paid me a visit. He looked at me apologetic. I smiled at him. What we created was groundbreaking. We were able to capture a person's train of thought through their own personal film, he said. But we didn't master the psychological side of the experiment as much as we should have. Watching the happy and funny dreams were harmless. But something about watching the sad dreams, the horrific dreams, set off a reaction that was far beyond what we were able to predict. We were always told as kids not to talk about our nightmares for different reasons. Bad luck bad reactions from other people. So, being able to actually watch our dreams, to see our dream selves in an awakened state, causes us to believe we are that version of ourselves. Over time, it causes us to believe that those things actually happened or are supposed to happen. So the next time you get angry over not fully remembering a nightmare, don't. There's a reason why you can't remember at all. If you do, you'll unintentionally make it happen. Be thankful there's no dream machine. It's not natural. It's not safe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a comment underneath. Like the video, maybe? Or subscribe if you really did like it and look out for future content coming. Thanks a lot. I've been Frankie Denham, and I'll see you next time.